Roll call, Vicki. Okay, Mr. Caliguire. Here. Ms. Dormo. Here. Ms. Gunteski. Mr. Jenkins, Cameron. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karamanugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. Here. Mr. Lohr. Ms. Whitney. Here. Okay, great. Um, basically, just want to go over the agenda with everyone ahead of time, you know, make sure we're all on the same page so we don't have any problems. Uh, we'll go down to... Uh, Did you open the board work session? Yeah, we're opening this as a board work session. Yeah, but don't you have the motion? No, we don't need a motion right. to open it as a work session. Okay, I'm basically going to go down. We'll get to, uh, you know, welcome. I'm going to do my usual welcome visitors. You know, I'm going to talk quickly about the uh, budget, the CARES Act, and the reopening committee. Once I'm done with that, Joe will have a chance to talk about that also. I'm going to try to keep it under five minutes because it seems like if you go over five minutes, a lot of people tend to lose interest. You know, then obviously public comment. Joe, is there anything you want to share with us with your superintendent's report before we do it? Is there anything? As part of the work session, uh, we're going to review any agenda item that, that the board wants to review. So if, you know, on my superintendent's report, the board wants to review anything, we can definitely talk about it. Okay. We uh, do require a motion and a second to open it to the public. To open, to open the session, yeah. Because yeah, the session this is, isn't open to the public, Vicki. This is just a is, work session. The, the work session is a public session. Public, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, our, this is our first time doing a work session. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I haven't done one in seven years, but typically it's on a separate night, so it's less confusing. And then you just go over the board uh, agenda with the board, and some members of the public are there. But then there's the regular session, of course, where we go over the agenda and board members are actually voting on the items. So it's a uh, session is just more of a discussion for the board's sake. It, the public can be there to watch, but it's not really the same as uh, the, um, the regular meeting. Okay, well, then I'll need a motion to open this. A motion to open the session. Caliguire. Thank you. Marissa, Marissa will second. All right. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, we already talked about Joe's superintendent report. Um, Lynn, do you have anything you. Um, I, I do have a, uh, something I want to discuss on okay. the superintendent's report. Sure. Letter E, district reopening plan. Okay. Um, I know that when we vote to approve it, this, this document, this plan is always in flux, but I just wanna make sure I understand as of today, we have no specifications for opening windows on buses or classrooms. Is that correct? That's correct that that's not written in the plan right now. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm okay with the uh, superintendent's report. Okay, everything has changed because of what the state has come out with and Joe can explain that a little bit later also. Yeah, during the regular meeting, when I believe more members of the public could potentially be here, I'm going to give a little explanation during the superintendent's report about uh, reopening, uh, some of the common questions, and plus the governor's announcement today, as we all know, uh, could potentially change a lot of things, so. All right, um, going down to finance committee report. Um, Vicki, I gotta give you a, Shout out there, you did a very good job of trying to straighten a lot of this mess out. As, everybody, as everybody can see, you know, we had to reduce our budget by $115,436, but we got money, we got 52,591 from the CARES Act. And if you look at F, you can see what we've turned around and reduced. And Vicki did an exceptional job of working with the lease purchase. So we didn't have to affect any personnel, which really makes me happy. Um, I did notice some special education costs on there. Are they budgeted special education costs by any chance, Vicki? Yes. Okay, they all are. Does anybody have any questions on our finance? Yes, I have a question on... Um... It's letter C, which is attachment J, page 51 
of the board packet. It's page 51 at the bottom. Um, I know we have two sources of money. One is the CARES Act and the other is the uh, ESSER fund and the other is the digital divide. And I know that an approved expense, uh, an approved um, expenditure using CARES funds is to buy online um, material. So on the bottom of page 51, we see about $69,000 for a new math program. So um, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, we do need a good new online math program because online is more important than ever. I'm just wondering prior to this math program, was our, was our prior math program an online program or no? It was partly online and partly uh, hard copy. It's, it was, it was hard. I was going to say there are parents on the board that are aware because they, you know, they've helped their kids with the math program. Okay, so the prior math program um, that has an online component, when was that purchased? The one prior to this one that's being um, bought with CARES Act money? Was that like so, five years ago or? Uh, it could have been. I mean, I would have to look back at uh, my records, but I know that we had two math programs. So, uh, when it comes to the middle school, um, we had big ideas math. And then when it comes to the elementary school, we had Go Math. So we had two separate math programs. And uh, Go Math was purchased earlier. I, I don't have all of that uh, readily available right now. What I can say is it's been in, in place for a number of years. I would say about five years. Five years. OK. and. Um... I know that I, when I first came on the board in January, because of my teaching experience, decades of teaching experience, I was I asked for the curriculum committee. I never attend. I was never asked to attend one meeting, but I was told this program had already been vetted by the teachers, and that they are strongly in support of that. Is that correct? Yes, Casey Noble worked with various teachers on uh, selecting a math program and the program that was selected is into math. Okay, so um, because, because you're telling me this and because this happened before I really came on the board, you're saying this was a done deal before I was on the board, really. I am um, not gonna be opposed to this, but I would hope going forward, any big curriculum expenses I could at least be involved in the conversation. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem, Vera. All right. Does do you have any other questions on anything with the uh, finance by any chance? Um, well, just on the CARES Act. I mean, Vicky spent so much time going over things with me. So actually, even though I'm talking a lot, it's actually cut it down a lot because she spent so much time going over things with me. So um, basically, when I'm looking at page 51, that at, at the uh, bottom of page 51 in the board packet, and I know it's basically for that math instructional program. So can I assume that the $12,000, the $50,000, and the $6,000 roughly, those figures all involve the math program? That is the total for that math program, yeah. The six okay. five is the total of it. Okay. Um, yeah, I believe those were my main. I mean, I have, I'm not, I'm still going to vote no on stuff, but I have more yes votes this time because I understand more. So, and, and I won't take up time, you know, asking about necessary line, line item transfers and stuff like that. I'm just going to um, just vote no for now because I'm still unfamiliar. So that's it for me for the finance committee report. Uh, not a problem there. Does anyone else have any questions on finance? I believe Harry and Vince do. Okay. Harry needs to be unmuted. You can click alternate A to unmute. You still can't hear you, Harry. Bottom left corner, there you go. There He's, go. Good. Okay. He's good. Ah, there he goes. Harry, you just muted yourself again.
Uh, yeah. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, because I'm having trouble with the uh, ver ver uh, reverberation on the sound, but um, I agree with Vera, it would be appropriate, not just for Vera, but for committees to meet in a timely fashion and be informed so that some of this knowledge isn't found out at a work session at this point. But um, my concern was that that program, I'm assuming, was selected before the COVID and before we knew the possibility of going virtual was distinct. And at this point, is that the best program to be using going virtual or was that selected without the idea that we might have to go virtual? And whatever we did up to last year going virtually, can we continue with that and research and find the best program? This may be it, I don't know, but if it was selected before that was a consideration, I don't think we will it was, uh, and is there an urgency if it's if we've gone five years using this program to switch at this point? And how would we insert its people? And how would, you know, I think that that's questionable of at this point changing horses for that. Okay, Harry, 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 it was there was a process prior to COVID 19 that we were following with that. So it is um, the decisions were made independent of the COVID 19 situation. But uh, because this new program relies very heavily on online resources, uh, we think it's a perfect option for what we're doing. It may well be. I'm just saying the consideration I would have that I just expressed, though, that um, if we weren't buying a new MAP program, we'd be, we would still use what we were using. And since, in fact, it basically at least first, it's like leasing a hard for five years at the end of it, we don't have that program anymore. We're going to have to do something else. And that's what I'm thinking about now. But that was considered uh, really well because I don't think MAP programs were being designed with the idea of being virtual, unless it didn't, you know what I'm saying? I'm, there may have been something out there for that. I don't know. Harry, um, it wasn't I designed have, for, for virtual, but it's designed for online resources and online instruction. So uh, what I can say about Into Math is if we were to say, let's stay with Go Math and stay with Big Ideas, we would still need to spend money for their online resources. So our, our contract with them was up. So we might still have textbooks, but our contract for the online resources uh, was finished. So we looked into extending that contract and we figured if we're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars on anything, we might as well get a new program that has the most up-to-date resources based on the standards, uh, based on what we need for, for uh, online resources. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, there, there were concerns. I understand, but I'm saying now the standards matter. I mean, the whole standards were not, you know, that doesn't seem to be the emphasis at this point. And that's what I mean. I'm just saying we need to if we're going to live with it for five years and the money can be allocated, we know it's like, okay, there, this can be done, but is there something better since we can relook at it if we choose to? So I'm sorry, Eric. I'm trying to listen and I, you're so garbled. I, Joe understood a little bit more. We were talking about the math program, but a lot of us really can't understand. Maybe type it in chat. That's a good option. That's a good idea. I yeah. I, mean, I have a question about F as well. About what? Question about letter F. F. Ah. F uh, 1140, which is $5,000 for transportation. Mm. And in that, apparently, cut out the. Um, for the NJ, you know, for the New Jersey School Board Association, the virtual October program that they're going to have, which for nine hundred dollars allows twenty-five people to have access to all that information for a year. And I don't know about anybody else, but I, I, I sort of get a feeling that 
some, some folks think that we're not part of the New Jersey School Boards Association. We can do whatever the heck we want. And yeah, to a large degree, we can and have been doing that. And, and it's just regarding some benefits that we can get from it. And it's short sighted. And yeah, board members like to go to Atlantic City for all different kinds of reasons. We all can, can say that's why that's great, but for $900, not to have all that information that's available for at least 25 people for our district is incredibly short sighted. And the same thing about. The, the fact that you know we're losing points on the Q stack because the um, you know the, the CSA evaluation, and I remember distinctly at a meeting, Phil, saying that it would be advantageous for you to get in touch with um, Jesse Adams there about that because what we what we got, I mean, literally, it was the last thing I got before this meeting. Could have been done three months ago, it would have been a problem. It could have been done hey, two months ago. I, I believe Harry was talking about the travel there, Vicky. That was for that wasn't for us though, was it? Vicky's still muted. Vicky's muted. Your mic. Okay. <laughs> You might hear my papers rustling. Um, if do you remember talking about it? And you said if you went to the convention that you would pay for it out of pocket. Right. So that, that was taking that five thousand dollars off for that travel, correct? Um, it wasn't five thousand, but yeah, it took that travel out. Now, what I think what Harry said was that um, they because it's online now, they reduced the the cost of it, and it is nine hundred dollars for twenty five people to attend. Well, so and that yeah, you know, oh, I mean, we can still attend we'll virtually, yeah. Okay, virtually. Okay. Yeah. And they announced months ago that it would be virtual for October rather than having us travel to Atlantic City. So, but no, I, I heard Harry mentioning the CSA evaluation. That's something that we will discuss in executive ses uh, in executive session as a confidential matter, not as a public matter. Uh, so. And, and there are a lot of well, details content today, is, which we can discuss. Content, but the process is what I'm talking about, how we're doing things about as a board, how we're operating it, we're having um, enough information shared, if we're having needed um, committee meetings, if information is shared among all board members. There, there's questions, not, not the specifics of the evaluation, but the process and well, I think the process is directly linked to discussion of details though so if we were to say you know anything related to the process I think we start getting into how I'm being evaluated as the CSA and I think that you know it would be like saying what's the process for evaluating teachers and we can discuss it um, and we kind of tread very closely to the idea of sharing specifics of that type of thing it's it's um I don't know. It's, it's just the way I, I view it at this time. So we're going to talk about that in executive, correct, Joe? Yeah, but yes. Mm -hmm. but okay. Excuse me, though, gentlemen, and it's specifically Bill and Joe. I mean, if, is there any reason why the very last thing before this meeting was that about that, about the CSA? The, the reason, Harry, is that um, I, it's explained in the email I sent to you. So again, I. Uh, this is this is a matter of my evaluation that I really think should be handled in executive session. Harry, did he did you see the email, Harry? The the thing is that we missed the deadline for the. Um, I think we have to talk about this in executive session. Right. Something we need we to table. Yeah. No, we don't have to executive talk session. about it now. It's just that we missed that deadline for evaluating Mr. Mersinger, so we, we got to talk we about knew that later. We knew the deadline would be missed. I think that was pretty obvious. But no matter what. Uh, the, the, the fact yeah, that it's, it's, it's that very urgent it's matters to handle. And I'm not saying that my evaluation is unimportant. Okay. What I'm saying is that I would rather handle things for students and staff members than to say, here, let's put my evaluation at the very top. Doesn't mean it wouldn't happen. It just means that it's later than expected. That's oh. all. That That's not a problem. We can talk about that in the executive session after the meeting. Um, I just, believe Vince had a question. Okay, Vince, I believe you had a question too. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Cam. Uh, Mr. President, uh, 
Yeah, Mr. Mercer, I'm looking at um, just a quick question. I don't want to take this too long. We can take it too long. HI and uh, the following on J. When we're talking on, I'm going back to finance, we're talking about the Yale School in particular. I know we've talked about this, but if they given you any information on, will those children be, will it be going to the actual school or anything like that? Give you any direction? And do they actually tell you how they're going to take care of these students? Or you, do they involve you in that process? They don't involve me in the process. So that's a good question. Um, they don't involve me in that process, but what they do is they share the plan with us. So uh, if we have out of district students, uh, for example, as of today, I the plan for special services. So I would anticipate that Yale, Kingsway, Garfield, and various other entities out there are gonna share their plans with us. And I think that they would share our, their plans with even those districts that don't work them so that the districts know here is what here is what our students are receiving if we were to send a student there during this time and let's say if it would there be a, a change in any kind of the tuition if they did kind of change the program has that even been talked about at all i know we're too early but yeah. we have not seen changes in tuition vicky can you can you confirm that i mean i we, it, we were discussing this back in the spring when it comes to any kind of services. So, you know, if the child's not receiving the services, should we pay for them? So a lot of uh, certain services are a la carte, you know, so we're paying for a service that that's provided, not just something that's wrapped into a tuition. But the tuition, uh, Vicki, I didn't see any tuition lines going down, did you? No, there wasn't any reduction in the tuition because they said they were still teaching the students. Yeah. They even did um, speech therapy with them online. They did occupational therapy yeah. with them online. So we didn't have to chances. Thank you. All right. And do we have any more questions dealing with the finance committee report? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just remembered letter E of the finance committee report that has to do with the digital divide money. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that the, the numbers might have changed as to who needs Wi-Fi just because, um, you know, that now there's no more evictions protection. I mean, people's economic situation is, is a little tighter than it was. I'm also concerned that maybe not everyone answered this, the online survey about Wi-Fi because it was, it was um, an online survey. So if they didn't, if they didn't have Wi-Fi in the house, maybe they didn't answer it or a language barrier. Can you tell me, can you give me a number of how many people re return the survey of our total population? So if you're referring to the, the survey from July, uh, I can provide needed, that. Like who, who needs Wi-Fi? If we have around 400 students, I'm not sure how, how many families that breaks down to. It's probably not, it's not 400 families, but how many, what percentage of families answered that survey about they have Wi-Fi access, they have devices? Because if the return rate was low, we might need a lot more hotspots than we ordered in our digital divide grant. Well, we certainly can't order enough hotspots for every family that could potentially need it. That's part of the challenge. Vicki and I talked about it the other day. That we can order hotspots, but um, let, me, let me bring up this data, right? So it says here, um, okay, so we had 230 responses and uh, about 92% said that they have high-speed internet. So about 8% do not have that. And then uh, same thing for the devices, uh, about 87% have a desktop, laptop, or tablet, and then 13% uh, do not, and, and again, there were 230 responses. Now- Is that, is that 230? That's almost like 90% of all families in Delanco? What no, is that percentage? Um, the last, the last time I looked at that data, uh, 230, have to uh, bring that up. I think I sent a message to the board about this, but I believe it was about 70 to mm -hmm. 75% of the families uh, that had responded. Which is, okay. It's a good number, but it's not everybody. So if we look and say, well, approximately 8% or even let's say up to 12, 10 to 12% of our families need hotspots, uh, we don't necessarily have the funds to purchase enough for every single family at this time. But we, we are looking at a number that we think makes sense uh, considering so, uh, the situation. So after, 
providing for the health and safety of the students, which is the first priority. The second priority is everyone has to be able to go online. So I think some of that CARES money that went from the math online program, some of that should have been set aside to anticipate that we might we might need more money for those hotspots or anything to do with getting people online. I think you have to take the long view and not commit such a large chunk of money, $69,000. Although it's, it's for something very important, an online math curriculum, getting people, making sure everybody's online, everybody has Wi-Fi, everybody has a device. Excuse me. That's only moving secondary money to out of the and lease. safety. Without moving that money out of the lease purchase, we wouldn't have been able to cover the $115,000 reduction in state aid without cutting something we really don't want to cut. But maybe we, we would have had to wait to buy that math online curriculum. We could have set it for a year from now instead of getting it right now. Right now is a very, a very special situation with a pandemic going on. Well, that was a big commitment hey vera that that i excel the kids use it a lot like that's been going around for a few years they kind of use it like to fill yeah. it was like before the pandemic was like filling up time and to do extra study like at home so you know just from my experience my kids they were using i excel a lot yeah there's a lot of free programs prodigy is free khan academy is free i mean it's a done deal now i wasn't included in the, i mean i volunteered to be on, be on the reopening committee i wasn't chosen i mean we should have discussed where this CARES money, the 69K was going to. And I mean, I think we should have, we, we need to see the long view. We should have had more of a chunk ready for either prevention of COVID-19 or Wi-Fi access. That's what I want to say. I think it was, I would say, I would say math excited to put that big 69K right on there. I would say math instruction is, is not ignoring the long view. Uh, in, in education of children is what we do. Yeah, but if people can't get online, well, what does the online math support. curriculum yeah. matter? Doesn't matter. A I group. agree with and you. A couple of the parents have started a support group, Vera. If you would like to reach out to those parents and help out, you know, and that's check a separate them. issue. I'm talking about how we allocate money. I think it was a mistake to put that 69K on an online math program. We could have delayed that for a year. We could have used a bigger chunk of that money for ensuring health and safety. That was already part of the budget. We wouldn't have had any alternate resources for math for online. We would have had nothing. We would, there's Prodigy. Yeah, there's anyway. Khan Academy. It was already approved in the budget in March. And yeah. yeah, I wasn't involved in that discussion. That's what Harry Litwack is saying. We got yes. to, you have yes, to involve were you voted on the budget there. Discussion. The Budget and Finance Committee discussed it at length, and in fact, it was considered not using the math program, as I mentioned. I was not in on that discussion, and in but you're several, not going to be in on every discussion. And in several That's meetings, I in several meetings, board, I said I that, would like to know what the CARES money is going towards. Before I knew it was for the math curriculum, I was like, "Can you give me an itemized list? Can you give me an itemized list?" But, I but here, it was not for program. the math curriculum. It was shifted to the math curriculum so that we could defray the costs elsewhere. So and I think I, it's a done deal, we didn't but I think it do was that. I, I think that you're misunderstanding now, of, what, of what Vicki did with the funds there. I think that you're misunderstanding that. So, well, I guess we'll still, we'll, we'll get the money somehow, I guess, if we need it, right? For everyone to be online. There's a lot of things we're still working on and a lot of things haven't been finalized yet. I wish I wish we had a little bit of that CARES money, but. Well, but it, we, do, we do. I, Ms. Vera, I, I think you're misunderstanding. Vicki, I don't know if you could explain it better, but we're talking about shifting money around with a lease purchase with the CARES funds and so on. And also CARES is not something that we, um, it, when we look at the different types of funding we received, the digital divide funding is something that was literally just revealed a few weeks ago. It's not new about that in March. We, we, we didn't know about that. So I feel like it's it's kind of disingenuous. That was July 15th, right? I think the uh, digital divide I, money. I, I would say so. So I would say it's kind of disingenuous to say, well, we didn't have a discussion of this. We didn't even know the funding was available at that point. We knew that we needed math instruction. That's what we knew. 
But um, when, but, when uh, was that check cut for that to do that? I mean, are you saying that this math money went out a long time ago before all of the COVID-19 happened? Absolutely. We, it was built into the budget before that. What, when was that? When was that paid out? It's on the vendor bill list on page 51 that you pointed out earlier in the meeting. Does yeah. that have the date? Yes, it does. Yes. When the check went out? I'm trying to pull it up right now. So you're saying that that went out before all this COVID-19 stuff happened? No, it went out on July 21st of 20. All three checks. One for two. So we yeah. already knew about the pan the pandemic in at that time. No, we were already. That money. We already voted on it prior to that information coming out the check went out after we voted on it correct so we could have shifted our vote we had voted on it previous to that but that was a bad vote out. that that vote you voted on it and then a po was put, was placed correct. with the vendor to order it so, right when we uh, when we discuss something when we turn around and approve something after we approve it then after that the check gets sent out which is what vicky did and you guys never discuss with me what that money was going for we until you already, until you already paid out the money. Vera, I think that you're being deliberately argumentative here because you know very well that every topic can't be discussed with every board member. You know this. When it, did, when it involves $69,000 during a pandemic, yeah, I the think The Board Finance Committee that. is a sufficient group of minds coming together saying, we can decide how the money is going to be spent. You know, I feel like it's interesting. Well, I mean, people they'll, people listening, they'll decide if your judgment was good or not. So I'll leave it at that. Thank I mean, you, you seem much. to have already decided, and that's your prerogative. I just I just wonder why it's a debate, knowing that in the process of selecting the program, we had no idea that CARES Act even existed. In the process of paying for the program, we didn't really know much about any div digital divide funds. So, it, I, I mean, I feel like you're... You're expecting us to have precognition. Of I would have said, hold off on buying a new math curriculum. That's what I would have said. You voted, you voted for it, and I understand why you voted for it. You thought it was a good curriculum, but then when you saw it, when you see what's happening with the pandemic, I would have gone back to the finance committee and said, let's hold off on purchasing this math curriculum. Let's I want hold you off to, a year. to the one thing that I've said that's the most relevant. If we said we will keep our current programs, our, our accounts would be discontinued with them unless we paid more money. So we decided- And those programs were like programs. $3,000, right? No, they no, no, not, 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 not IXL. We're talking about Go Math and Big Ideas online resources. Two. Or that I, I, would, I would ask that you look at the big picture I feel like you're looking at it as this was a poor decision, but many different factors were considered. And the timeline of it is that it's easy to look now in August and say, hey, wait, why, why didn't we do this? But we had already been going through all these steps. There's a total curriculum free on Khan Academy that is lined up with the core curriculum standards that many schools across America use. I think does, we could have Hamilton used that Township for a that? year. Does Hamilton Township use that? They do use, some teachers use Prodigy, which is free. Some uh, use Khan Academy. The township only use free resources. They use it as a supplement, but they have the total curriculum on there. Right. Well, That's not that, saying I, that the teachers don't teach. Well, they, but, but Vera, teach. Vera, resources aren't free. And, and I agree with you that it's a big expenditure. I, I would not argue with that. We discussed it. We said, can we change this and we realized that doing it wouldn't make much sense at the time when we made that decision. I really hope that every family that needs to get online that needs a device has it and if the kids do have to go into school we don't have like I hope we have enough specialized equipment to keep them safe. Right and because we don't have the money now to buy it. You're right, and we, we our bought finance. it with other funds. We bought. So, Vicky, could you can you give us a list of the funds or the uh, some of the things that were purchased for custodial? Just off the top of your head, uh, we purchased two um, electrostatic sprayers. Purchased a lot of cleaning supplies. We the sprayers um, donated by Mr. Campbell. 
Those they were, were two foggers. Yeah, the foggers. And they yeah. are, they're different. They, oh, okay. And I don't know that they would be, um, we're definitely going to be able to use them and it's great to have them, but they wouldn't be able to clean both buildings as quickly as the other one and as efficiently and thoroughly. Um, we've purchased um, gloves, masks, cleaning supplies. Jim's making um, some of the acrylic partitions. Exactly. And we're also getting donations of supplies from different organizations uh, over the months. Uh, so, and we're looking, I'm working with a local group called Delanco Mutual Aid. Uh, they focused on equity, diversity, inclusivity, but they are also asking questions in general about how the district is running. And one of the members is looking into getting hotspots donated to the district. It's not guaranteed, but they're looking into it. So, um, hand sanitizer stations. Well, the hand sanitizing stations and other things. You know, so I feel like saying that, that every decision is going to be perfect, but I feel like if we look like look back in hindsight and say, well, you know, why did we spend the money this way? We needed a new math program. We needed new math resources, and we needed to move on it somehow. Now, when it comes to spending CARES Act, Vicki would have to explain the business end of things where money gets shifted around for different purposes because that's, um, that's what was needed because of the lease purchase, correct, Vicki? There, there was a lease purchase in there in order to be able to afford the two servers, to be able to afford 90 Chromebooks so that we could move our one to one initiative down to another grade. Exactly. Um, and if we didn't get that CARES money, we would have been talking some personnel cuts. So Vicki's done an extremely good job of arranging the finances and going through things to make sure that we can have everything. And that's what we're trying for. You know, uh, the finance committee goes over a lot of different things, Vera. Maybe next year you can be on finance committee if you wish. There's a lot of things that have to be learned about what goes on with the finances, how we spend things, how we do things, and looking at a long term. Nitpicking over one or two things does us no good. I'm nitpicking over $69,000. You're absolutely right on a decision that was made and you were involved in it before also. And so, as it, when it comes to committee, when it comes to committee, you don't, I ask for a committee and you don't, uh, you don't make a committee meeting. So I don't know, like if I ask to be on the finance committee and then I won't be called to participate. The finance committee had already been set. I haven't participated in one committee meeting so far. Because, because not other. because I don't want to, because no meetings have been called. Right, because we have quite a few other things that we're going on right now. You know, aside however, however, Vera, you have sent a significant amount of emails as as we're both aware. Yes. So and I'm very glad that you did take one of my um, suggestions regarding the reopening. And I do appreciate that. Which suggestion? That was the suggestion about middle school teachers moving from class to class as opposed to students being in the hallway. And I thought it was being original because my ESL students say in their countries, they stay in their classrooms and the teachers move from class to class. But actually when I was reviewing the CDC guidelines, that's one of their guidelines as well. That's why I would love to give you credit for it, but the idea was already pretty widespread uh, when we were considering it. Yeah, I guess you didn't know that when you thanked me for it in an email. Right. Well, I mean, I pre <laughs> I appreciate the suggestion. I really do, and it was uh, it's uh, it is a good one. And we and we're going to see eye to eye sometimes, Vera. That's and Vera, Vera, you are on you are on the instruction and program yeah. committee, and we have yet to have a meeting on that. And I'm sure if we do have an, a meeting on it, you will be involved, and then you'll be discussing. Well, Thank that would be nice. It's August. That would be nice to go to a committee meeting. Well, right, but we haven't had anything to discuss as of yet. When we or, do, or we have uh, things to discuss. But I, there is this thing called COVID nineteen that a lady named Vera Darmo said will change everything. It has changed <laughs> my life and everyone else's life. So when it comes to the schedule for other things, I'm sorry, but they are on the back burner. They really are. Uh, you know, we've been focusing on COVID nineteen the closure, the reopening, uh, it's been a tremendous amount of work. So for me to say, well, let me just set that aside and focus on these things, uh, I, 
it's it's tremendously challenging. I don't have a team of 30 administrators to delegate things to. I have me and a few of my key team members. That's it. And we don't have many other people working during the summer that I can just say, well, here's my team. Let's get it all done. It doesn't happen that way. So true. Anyhow, does anyone have any more questions on finance? Well, just, yeah, I'll just make one comment, um, Mr. President. Um, not that I agree with a lot of questioning or, or what the proposal was from the board member. I just want to bring up that, that this is why I think it's very important when it comes to budget and finance matters that we make every effort to try to have an extra meeting prior to adoption of whatever the matter is so that all board members can discuss. Um, I know that we've been doing that with budget where we have a meeting with the full board prior to our adoption because we were finding out that board members were surprised on what they were voting for when it came time for introduction. So I know that with COVID-19, you know, a lot has changed. We're moving very rapidly. Yes. Decisions have to be made in a small window of time. I get it. Um, but I just want to say that this, this is a perfect example of why I think that we need to have, when it comes to finance and budget matters, we have to meet before our official board meeting so that we can discuss and iron out uh, the, these issues and answer questions. I, I just want to make that comment that this is a perfect example of what I have been saying for years is that when it comes to budget and finance matters, we have to meet prior to the board meeting to discuss with the full board. I have Stephen, that's what this is. I want to have this pre-meeting so we can just go yeah. over and hash out some of the things here first. Yeah, so that's what this is, right? I mean, Phil had suggested this. It's something I've had experience with in the past, but I would love for our board to have a monthly work session meeting where we go over the agenda prior to any approval being happening, like ha happening, just like we're doing now, but it's it's kind of built in this time. Uh, but right. that, I think that's a perfect idea because then nobody feels like they're in the dark on anything. And I remember, Stephen, what you're talking about with right. from a couple of years ago, and board members, uh, you know, the finance committee focused on it, but the whole board didn't have a chance to at that point. Right. And we, we've made small steps towards that, um, especially when it comes to the budget adoption. I know that we have that, you know, one year we had a, a completely separate meeting. And then one meeting we had it, um, I think it was an hour or two before we went into the official meeting for budget adoption. It's just that we should continue to make every, every effort to meet before, you know, our regular board meetings so that board members have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, I'm not saying that we're always going to end up agreeing, um, but these types of matters, definitely, I can understand frustration um, that some board members may have when it comes to budget and finance, because that's really, in my opinion, the budget and finance committee is probably the most important subcommittee, in my opinion, to the district. Um, and those matters tend to be among the most um, looked at and, uh, you know, discussed. Very good. Thank you, Stephen. I, you know, uh, Phil, I agree with Stephen completely, and I would go as far to say that the budget is the driving force behind many of the things we do. So right. philosophically, we can believe things, we can have values, we can have a curriculum, uh, we can follow standards, but if we don't have the money to make it happen, then uh, we can't move forward with it. So that that's so essential. So true. Okay, that pretty, does anybody else? Oh, Harry has something. Okay, Harry, is there any chance you can call in Harry, on the phone because- Harry just muted himself Everything, again. you just muted yourself again, but it's extremely difficult to hear what you're saying. Harry, Harry you're muted. Harry, you're muted. Harry, you're muted. Harry, you're muted. Press alternate letter A. Alternate letter A or control A. You're still on no. mute, Harry. Uh, Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. now. You hear you, Very garbled, though, Harry. I didn't give you a phone number to call because that wasn't, I didn't get a phone number. With, I've done that with other Zoom meetings where they give you the phone number in advance. I don't have a phone number. Uh, Albert, oh, sorry. Is Albert, there a phone yeah, Albert could provide Let's give him the phone. Yeah, the thing is, with our Zoom meetings, since we're running the free version, they don't provide a, a phone number for audience members to call in. 
Okay. I know what I'm saying when I hear these other ones are on. So, uh, you know, I put up with two hours and not be able to hear anything. So I could tell what they used to call deaf and dumb people, uh, you know, the last board meeting. And I, like I say, I think I said earlier, I think I was counted not there, but I should be counted there because I've been at board meetings where board members have sat there forever and the meeting never opened their mouth. So I don't know if that made any difference. And then this week, I can't, it's the technology. If I'm an adult and have this problem, and I have the wherewithal to provide it, what the hell is happening is what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, we'll get this form, we'll get that form, we'll get the hot sauce, we'll get the. I don't know if you can hear me now or not. Can you hear me? Was it static? Mm -hmm. You're, we can hear you. It's you're just static. static. Extremely garbled, Harry. Can you can hear, hear us? I can hear him a smidge better than I did before. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I agree. Can you hear us, Harry? Oh. oh, can you hear us? Other than Link, can you hear me? Can you wait there? I can hear I... you. Oh, darn. No. Harry, can you hear us legibly? Not really. I guess not. Yeah, you said not really. That's what I've had the back problem with this. And my point is, and it's probably because I have dialogue. That's how I receive my, you know, pulse. There's uh, people Harry, down there. Harry yeah. when we go for a vote, if it's a yes, can you just put your thumb up or a thumb down? Can you do that? Like a, a finger up or a finger down? <laughs> finger up or a finger down? So. <laughs> I, I saw that. Okay. Got this this, this is a public meeting. For removal. <laughs> it's, a, it's a public meeting, Harry. Oh. Okay. Like that, Harry. You've got the little thumbs up that you can use. I don't know about other, I don't know about other board members, but I was elected to serve on a board, not be part of a public case rule. And now, okay, now we're going to the with the school board or the, the town council, but the town council will have me. So here, I don't know what to do. To support you to get you off the board or support you to, you know, the town, I have a confusing film. And did you get your garage tent? Maybe we can sell you the one we have. Use mm -hmm. the, the uh, garage that we have. The whole garage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. I You're garbled to the point I can't really understand what you're saying does mm -hmm. everybody else type, have... maybe type yeah, well, type I, in the I, chat box I, 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 Mary, it's hard to understand you yeah a lot of people can understand what you were okay when i teach online sometimes i have this problem i have to leave the meeting and return again okay. Okay. Well, he, he left, but he didn't leave virtually. No, like, he left. He left physically. Okay. Well, I, I I'm sorry. We've got to move on. Does anybody have any other questions with finance committee? Okay. Harry, Vera, Vera's saying you could log out and log back in. See, Vera, Sometimes we see eye works. to eye. We see eye to eye on things, Vera. Okay. Um, Vince, do you have anything for Operation and Facilities Committee? Anything? You're muted, Vince. He's getting there. <laughs> well, it's more of just a thanks, discussion Cam. of items. Okay. Know, so. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Operations and Facilities Committee report for the month of July 2020. Uh, routine maintenance schedules. Schools closed to Corona, of course. Uh, yard care, mowing, weed whacking. Um, when I go out in the morning, I see them doing it by the school. They're doing a great job. Summer cleaning is continuing. I've been seeing them do that. I saw the van in there the other day, and they're they're working hard. Uh, special project activities: repair the leak on Pearson roof, clean up debris after storm. Cleaning staff has disinfected both buildings on a daily basis, and have back routine maintenance: uh, rooftop units, unit vents, rooftop fans. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, great. Um, I have a question for Vince. Go ahead, Vera. 
Um, so I go over all the CDC guidelines for reopening schools. And it said that when schools have been shut down a long time, the water system can, there's danger of Legionnaire's disease and other bacteria growing. And they say there's specific protocols to prevent that from happening. Are the facility um, people aware of those protocols that the CDC has for reopening schools? Vera, Vera, are you are you repeating the question you asked me over email because you want others to hear it? No, the reason is because at the last minute, I looked at the attachment L, yeah. and in the attachment L, I did not see um, following protocols for safeguarding water systems. It was not to make you look bad, Mr. Mersinger. It was because I care about the students. Well, we all care about the students. Uh, you're not alone in that. Uh, our district facilities team, especially Tim Allen, is certainly aware of Legionella bacteria, which leads to Legionnaire's disease. This has been discussed with him. He has certain steps that he takes. Uh, and so, I, I mean, and Vince, as the chairman of the committee, doesn't necessarily meet with Tim, but, you know, I... Not really I was just wondering why it wasn't. Well, Vera, I can, uh, Vera, you know, I work at That's NJDEP, so uh, that information is easy to find out. I work with water all the time. Um, I mean, and I understand your concern about Legionnaires. I mean, my concern has always been I, I work uh, partially in Paulsboro, but PFAS, PFAN, those are uh, huge problems in the state, oh, yeah. surpassing lead and those issues. Um, the water supply I know here is clean. That's something I look at myself living here in the township to know these things. Um, the school specifically? It's a good question. Um, give me a little time, I can find out. All right, thank you, thank you, Vince. Any other questions for Vince or anything? Okay. I do have one question. Um, might not be the right place to ask, but um, do you have a list of any supplies? Um, I know the cleaning supplies are very specific, but uh, masks, things like that, that people might wanna donate, uh, what you need and what would be the procedure for that? The question, Lynn. So right now I'm working with organizations, not with individuals for donations. So for example, uh, Home Depot has already given me a verbal agreement that they can donate materials to us when it comes to masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, uh, and some other, you know, other materials that, that we see as being necessary. So I have Tim Allen uh, working on that when it comes to a list of things that he foresees we're going to need more of. So I'm not saying that individuals couldn't donate. They certainly could. It's more of uh, we, we're developing that list. And we'll, once we send it to Home Depot, we can certainly share it with any individual who wants to uh, help out as well. OK, it just might be a good idea to let people know so that you don't get multiple um, donations. OK, that would be a good Absolutely. question to bring up in our regular meeting too, Lynn. Yeah, so people know. Yes, very definitely. OK. Um, policy, policy personnel committee report. Cameron, do you have anything for us? Uh, nope, unless anyone has any questions about uh, letters A through E, I'm sure Joe uh, would be able to elaborate further into any of them. Are, are we voting on these reports? No, right this, this is, all this is is a work session, Steve. We're just going over the budget, you know, or just going over the agenda and then come uh, about three minutes from now, two minutes from now, we'll start our regular meeting. That's, it's just a work session, that's it. Okay. All right, um, just on board liaison reports, if, you know, I'll try to keep all my comments under five minutes because it seems like once we go past five minutes, a lot of people tend to lose interest. So on that note there, I think uh, we pretty well covered everything. Why don't oh, we- um, Did we talk about uh, item number 10? Item number 10. That's right before liaison reports. Talking about preliminary um, says, reports for Yeah, secretary. what it says, except preliminary reports. Usually we don't have the word preliminary on the agenda. And it also says in parentheses, revised versions may be submitted after closing entries and audit review. So will we then vote? Are you looking? Sorry? Is that for me? Number 10. Um, number 10. Yeah. So I'm just wondering. Yeah. Secretary and um, Treasurer. So this can be revised. Uh, the reports are preliminary. In, in June. They can be revised. They'll be revised. They can be revised after the audit. 
So, so, so then we vote on it again, or do we? Sorry. Do we vote on, do, when after they're revised, do we then vote to approve them again? If they're revised, you, yeah, they would be put back on the agenda. Right. Okay, that was my question. And that was the end of the audit. Are you familiar with the, the audit, Vera? Um, I believe you guys hire a company and they have to go through all the finances and I guess make sure everything looks good, right? Right. Delanco what, hires a company for that? Right. Sometimes we use Bowman and Company. We've used them before. Very good. And what they do is they go over and they look at every finance. They look at every transfer. They look at everything. And at the end of it, they make recommendations whether we did something right, something wrong. Mm -hmm. For the past, I don't know how many years, we've never had any comments, which means we're doing everything right. So, you know, that has something to say about who we're using for our school business administrators. That means they're doing a good job. And that's the way we wish to keep it. Anyhow, we've pretty well run out of time for this work session. I'll need a motion to close this work session. So moved. Marcel, motion to close the work session. Second, Stephen. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we can get into, being as it is, 701 now, we can actually get into our regular meeting and I'll start from the beginning. I'd like to call this meeting to order of Delanco uh, School Board meeting for August 12, 2020. And I'd like to start off with a moment of silence. And I, I and this moment of silence, you know, I'd also like to have a moment of silence for Calista Childs, one of the students that used to go to our school and passed away, you know, unfortunately at, you know, a very young age suddenly. We'll start with a moment of silence. Okay, thank you all. And we can do our flag salute if everybody can point to their own flag or whatever. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it is one nation, one nation, one nation under God, God invisible with liberty and justice for all. And Vicki, roll call again, please. Mr. Caligar. Here. <laughs> Ms. Dharma. Here. Ms. Konteski. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Present. Mrs. Karen Nugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. Here. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mr. Litwack. Here. And Ms. Whitney. All right. I need an approval. I need a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes for the July 15th, 2020 regular and executive executive session meetings. Marissa will make a motion. Cam Jenkins with a second. Questions or comments? My comment is that the um, all my votes were recorded correctly, but the um, the note taking I thought was too like we, like for example, when I was talking about never going to a committee meeting since January, never being called for one, the only the only note that was written was the date of the next policy committee meeting was discussed. So I think the notes have to be a little bit more detailed. That's all my comment. That's all your comment. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion. I oppose. Dharma May. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, I've you know reviewed the preliminary reports for the secretary and treasurer for June 2020, and they are in agreement. There might be some revised versions submitted after the closing entries and the audit review. I make a motion for that. Stephen, we'll make the mo we'll make the motion. No, I already made the motion. You're going to second it, Stephen? Uh, Stephen will second the motion. Okay, not a problem. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Opposed, Darmo. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, liaison reports. I don't know whether we have anyone from the public for the, D, uh, for the PTO. I think uh, Catherine was on. Yeah. Kathy's on there, but she's muted. Catherine Plum uh, 
step down from her office, right. her officer. Oh, I thought you stole an officer. I knew she yeah. was in okay. And usually, we, we frequently been getting the message from Wendy Flanagan, who I'm right. looking to see if That's she right. was. Okay. Well, if there's nobody there, um, Dicer Recreation and Township Committee. I do see Mike is sitting there. Mike, do you have anything to say to us, sir? You are muted, by the way. There we go, got the right button. Um, we're gonna have a um, in-person meeting uh, this month. Uh, it'll be dual format, uh, be in person in the building, and they'll be able to call in and uh, remote in for those that want to attend. So we're hoping uh, the Joint Land Use Board has paved the way on managing and, and uh, orchestrating how they'll do that. So we're gonna see how this goes. We've got a, a light agenda, so we'll We'll give it a whirl. Okay, thank you, Mike. We did have a sewer authority meeting the other night and we were all spread out pretty well. That worked very well, you know, which was good. All right, um, before I get to my welcome note, no, no, uh, my welcome message there, I forgot. We didn't read the stating of that, the reading of the statement of adequate notice. Vicki, could you read this for us, please? Harry, I have a question. For recreation. Are the recreation programs going to be going on with the youth programs? Any recreation programs? Are the going recreation? On? <clears throat> uh, this um, is uh, Harry, right now, uh, the nice youth recreation nice. programs going on. I, I, I can answer that as a member of the Rec Commission. Um, we're trying to have our summer concerts, <clears throat> but we're assessing the situation with COVID and the weather as each concert date approaches. Um, if a concert is canceled, there will be a notification sent out via text message. And I believe it is put on the township website. Um, I did receive word that the there is an intention to cancel community day in the fall. Um, I don't see recreation um, doing it unless the fire and EMS um, also uh, do it. So um, I would say that as of right now, the only thing that's going on recreation wise are the summer concerts. Um, but like I said, uh, depending on if there's a big COVID spike or weather, um, you know, they, they, they are being canceled and can be canceled up to two hours before the concert time. Okay. Hello? Yeah, you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, there, there's not going to be youth sports. The reason I asked is because it came up at a Zoom meeting I was on county, you know, all the counties, and it was um, that, like, what we're doing, having an X group and a Y group, and that if kids are playing youth sports or that they're, they're mixing in those groups, that, you know, we think we're keeping them separated at school, but what about the bus stop? What about what are they wearing masks to and from? They, and they, one of the things I'm pointing out is that youth sports, you know, you're crossing them again if that's happening. I don't know if you heard me or not. So. I heard what you said. In, in, in that regards the two to groups will be talking to each other and might be cross contamination, but there, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Okay, Steve. Isolating X and yeah, yeah we're isolating X and Y, but if those kids are mixing or if they're playing on road teams, like mixing with other towns, etc. We can't. We can't. Are, really are you talking about that, school though. sports, Harry? No, I think he's talking about travel teams and rec teams. And yeah, yeah. We we don't have any impact on on whether they play those sports and interact with other kids, but. We can have an impact on. They have impact on us. The, the impact on us. In, That's the oh, point. I, I couldn't hear you. What was that? The, their impact is on us. We're not impacting them, but if they're doing okay. that, it impacts us. That's what I'm pointing out. And that was uh, later on in my uh, county stuff. I'll state the board. I'll bring that up again. Oh, okay. And then you'll let us know if the summer concerts cancel, Stephen. 
Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll notify the board if um, if our next cancer, our concert is canceled. Um, in regards to sports, I'll make an inquiry with the Sports Association in regards to what their plans are for fall sports. Um, but I, I, I couldn't answer that question at this time. Maybe Vince could. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Vicki, I didn't read the, get this reading a statement of adequate notice. Could you read that now, please? Sure. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on January 30th, 20. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on August 3rd, 2020. And filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on August 3rd, 2020. All right, thank you. Got a little bit out of order there. Um, welcome everyone. You know, glad to see you at our meeting. Um, unfortunately, like I say, this the sudden loss of one of our former students, Callista Childs, was a shock. I mean, she was going to, I believe, BCIT. And, you know, from the board and everyone else, you know, I mean, we're we send our condolences to the family. It's a crying shame. You know, it's not supposed to happen that way. Um, we had our you know, our school business administrator, Vicki, has worked very hard on our budget. The state cost us or cut $115,000 from us. Luckily, with the CARES Act, we got $52,000 extra back into our budget. And we've cut down a lot of other things, so we didn't have to affect any personnel. That was one of the important things we were trying to not affect because we think personnel is extremely important. As usual, our budget is very difficult. We've been working on reopening and, you know, I want a big shout out to all the parents, all the administrators, the teachers, and everyone that's been involved with the reopening. Of course, the state keeps throwing something different in the mix continually. And we'll be talking about that later tonight also, but who knows where it's gonna end up. Hopefully we can get, you know, our schools at least something going to educate our children. That's what we're pushing for now. Anyhow, I'd like to, that ends my message. I'd like to open this for public comment on agenda items. Okay. All right, Beans, I don't seem to have any, anybody raising their hands or anything. For, I'll close this for public comment. Superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I just want to reiterate the sentiments that you expressed about Callista Childs, who, uh, who actually graduated from Walnut very recently, uh, not during the current year, or not during last year, but the year before. And uh, it is definitely a, a huge loss for the community when it comes to the kids who knew her, the adults who knew her. And uh, going to her viewing, uh, it's it was great to see students coming together and supporting each other and members of the family, of course, supporting each other during that time. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a very tra tragic event uh, for one of our families. And I appreciate the support that community members have given to each other over this time because uh, it is tremendously hard uh, for everyone to go through this. So thank you for stating that, Mr. Um, as for the superintendent's report, uh, a motion is requested to approve the following items. Uh, superintendent's report submitted by myself, uh, principal's monthly report submitted by Lou Conti, principal's monthly report submitted by Casey Noble. Uh, the, pupil, the pupil welfare report is there uh, indicating the number of students as of August 8th. And then there's also the district reopening plan for the upcoming year. This is the version from August 3rd that was shared with all families uh, at that time. Uh, just, just to give a comment before the board approves, uh, one thing that the Department of Ed did indicate is that the board should be involved in the process. Uh, we did have in the reopening committee, we had parents, we had staff members, and also we have it on the board agenda. I've had board members uh, sending the emails, I've had parents sending the emails. So there are a lot of good questions. Uh, we had town hall meetings for the staff and for parents so um, although this has been a very challenging process to develop the plan, uh, I, I do feel proud of what we've accomplished. At the same time, uh, we're receiving different guidance as of today. Uh, this has happened a few times over the summer as everyone's aware. So uh, we, it is possible that the plan could change in the coming week. 
Uh, that's not something I'm sure anybody really wants to hear that they're going to be, but it really depends on uh, the nature of, of things in our district in relation to uh, what's being required by the state. So uh, those are my comments. Uh, so again, uh, motions requested for letters A through E on the uh, superintendent's report. I, Cameron Jenkins, will make the motion. Is there a comment period? There always is. After the motion? Yes. After the motion. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Stephen, we'll make, we'll second the motion. Questions or comments? My comment is on E. Right now, the district reopening plan as it stands, there's no specification that windows should be left open on buses or in classrooms. Children could be sitting in a classroom with air being recirculated with the windows closed. That's a possibility as the plan stands now. Masks protect the virus from coming into mucous membranes in the nose and the mouth, but the virus is also transmitted through mu mucous membranes in the eye. We want to keep the viral load down, which is why uh, a lot of districts are opening windows and that's CDC guidelines where, um, where allergies aren't a, a big concern. So that's my comment on that item. Okay, not a problem. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Jenkins, I'll comment uh, just in response to Ms. Darmo. Uh, it's absolutely true. Our plan does not account for that at this time. It's still being discussed. Uh, this cause to date, uh, we have received no guidance from the New Jersey Department of Health in relation to pre-K through 12 education. If you were to go to the Department of Health website, you would find no guidance documents whatsoever for school districts. So basically, uh, superintendents and other district leaders, commun community members, committee members have been piecing it together based on the CDC, uh, which is fine, but we want guidance from our state at the state level to say, this is what we're telling them to do. So um, if you follow Twitter, if you follow any of the discussions among my colleagues, uh, we are all very pleased that we've been given no guidelines from our Department of Health and the Burlington County Health Department has helped at times, but I, I would say that they're probably equally frustrated in the lack of state level guidance in relation to uh, health requirements. So true. Thank you. I'll, I also just want to make a real quick comment that um, I did read through the plan and I think that based on that, you know, this is this has never happened before. Um, it's a whole new ball game in regards to school districts, and there's a lot of moving parts with this. New information is coming out weekly. Um, I actually think it's a very good plan, and I, I do want to say uh, well done to the administration and the reopening committee. Um, I think it was a, uh, it's a very good plan um, for you know for this uh, time, and uh, you know that this has never happened before. So uh, well done to the administration. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Thank you. President. One response to Mr. Lohr for the for the sake of the public and the board is uh, I am reconvening our reopening committee as of tomorrow afternoon in light of the new, not guidance, but the comments, the announcement made by the governor. So we don't have official guidance on what he said today, but we are seeking it out. Uh, we're talking amongst our colleagues and we're meeting with our committee. So that's what yeah. we're doing in Delanco, uh, some other districts. Uh, I can't say what they'll be doing, but I have been talking with um, many local districts and saying, how are you addressing this uh, so that we're just not alone? We don't want to just be an island to ourselves doing uh, something that either doesn't make sense education-wise or health-wise during what Mr. Lohr is saying is an unprecedented time. So Right. And, and I think that the reopening plan, you know, it's, it's evolving. And it, to say that it's in stone, you know, today, this is going to be written in stone that it couldn't change tomorrow, I think is, you know, short-sighted. Um, but I think based on the information that we have today and going forward, it, it's, a, it's a good plan. Um, I have a question. If you could just clarify um, your recommendations about um, wearing of masks and if there are any exceptions and um, what is the policy going to be for the students? I think that's a good question. Uh, based on the guidance we received from our County health officials, uh, specifically Dr. Herb Conaway and Dr. Holly Kukazella, we met with uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, 
the indication was, and they met with nurses as well, school nurses, the indication from them was no mask, no entry for anybody. Uh, originally, different considerations were being made for students and everyone saw that as a potential issue because a student could still carry the virus. So then uh, what we had included in our plan was that masks are required for everyone and we can't make exceptions. Now, the governor basically confirmed what was in our plan uh, and at the same time said, well, districts can account for certain special needs. I think the issue though is that a student with special needs could carry the virus just as easily as anyone else. So the, I, I don't think that it, it, I just don't think that it's uh, as, as easy as, well, if a child has special needs, they don't need to wear a mask. Uh, I, that's, that is certainly not a statement we can make. So, you know, our current plan still says that everyone is required to wear a mask while in the buildings. Uh, there, there will be mask off times that are scheduled. I've spoken with the principals about doing out, scheduled outdoor times so that uh, students and staff can have fresh air. So, but no matter what, uh, there is the mask requirement for all. And uh, I know that, that people are hard pressed uh, to look at that and say, well, you know, how can a five-year-old do that? Or how can a student with severe needs do that? But uh, I feel like we do need to emphasize that, that the number one bullet on our list right now is the, the health and the safety of everyone. So, um, and, and that, that's no except, you know, no one is an exception to that. Um, anyone can carry the virus. So uh, I'm glad to hear that because one exception leads to another. And, and I think it just has to be universal. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. And, and, and although, I mean, it's a tough decision to make, but I'm glad that the governor confirmed what we were saying. Uh, and now when it comes to policies, uh, we don't have any official policy in place for it. It's not a written board policy. Uh, but we have received some policy recommendations from Strauss-Esme. This is something I will be discussing with our policy committee because we have numerous policies to go over. I think the challenge with any policy at this time, though, is everything keeps changing every couple weeks, whether it's funding, whether it's the health protocols, whether it's education protocols, uh, and health protocols, as we know, they've been few and far between. So it's... Um, it's really hard for us to say, well, let's let's rush these policies into place and say, well, that makes sense for us as a district, knowing full well that that practice and those policies could change within a couple of weeks. So um, it's something that I'm very hesitant to do. Uh, great. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, I, I just, I'm sorry. I just want to make one final point. Not a problem. Um, I, I also want to uh, say that, um, you know, you can have the best plan on paper. It's also about the execution. Um, and I think it's very important uh, that board members and community, you know, give the administration and the staff a little bit of slack um, when it comes to executing this plan. Uh, there's bound to be hiccups and there's gonna be bumps in the road. This is a learning process. Um, but as long as we keep the health and safety of our students and our staff top priority, um, I think that's the most important thing. And I just say that, uh, when this is when the school year starts, we, we can give them a little bit of a, a little bit of a you know some slack uh, to get this right and to execute this plan. All right, great, thank you, Stephen. Yeah. All right, anyone else? One, one more thing, yes. Mr. Jenkins. Yes, sir. About the plan and about the process we're taking now. So I don't want to leave the audience on the edge of their seats about this, but. You know, the governor made an announcement today talking about the possibility of, of districts being fully virtual uh, based on the fact that they're not able to uh, meet all the health specifications that are required. So that is a consideration that we have to look at over the coming days. Uh, and it is it adds a new layer of complexity to this situation. So um, I do appreciate the flexibility that that the parents and staff members and everyone has and students as well. I mean, it, it, everyone's going to need to have this grace, a sense of grace and uh, understanding and flexibility for one another. And I, I, that's, that's something that was discussed in the spring when it comes to leading with humanity. Uh, you know, I, it's, to me, it's, it's about really taking into consideration the impact of COVID-19, the impact of a school closure, the impact of technology issues and, and so on that ha th these topics have been discussed. So it's, uh, it's never simple, it's never quick. So if anyone is at the meeting tonight, 
looking for an answer to, are we going fully virtual? Uh, the answer is we don't know at this time. We have to explore it with various different individuals and groups and figure out what's best for Delanco. All right, very well said, Joe. All right, I see your hand moving, Harry. You're trying to say something? Yes, yeah, there we go. My screen's lit up. What about any of our staff, that teaching staff and adult staff that would like to have a face shield? Can we provide that for them? And I know that, for example, Moorestown is making sure that all their staff, their teaching staff, has those as well as the mask. But the shield, especially the, the, the people working, in it. what about our school nurses? You know, they're going to be the first, and we have substitute nurses. So, Harry, that's a great question. Um, right now, face shields are certainly allowed. They don't replace masks, of course, according to the guidance we've received from the state. That, that is one piece of guidance that the local, uh, the county health department has emphasized, but that doesn't mean we couldn't provide them. So right now, the plan incorporates us purchasing reusable masks for each staff member. Uh, we also have a number of disposable masks that can be provided to students that uh, do not have them. We have asked parents to provide masks for students that are coming into the building, just like we would ask parents to uh, you know, provide shoes and socks for their students. I mean, it is just a necessary item for a student to come in with. But when it comes to- I'm saying staff, job, I'm saying we're responsible for the staff. Oh, absolutely. So when it comes to a face shield for the staff, that is being discussed, uh, but it hasn't been decided yet whether we as a district are either requiring it or purchasing it for staff members. Okay, because um, I think they should be provided for, for staff, for the adults. Well, okay, you mentioned nurses, and the nurses uh, are definitely going to have a certain class of PPE that they are going to be provided with that's different from just a cloth mask or something that I could bring from home, you know. So that is different when it comes to those. Oh, I know, I know, but it, you know, it's, I know that we're not medically trained, but it's pretty obvious if you wear a shield that's more protection. I thought, you know, a dentist and they're grilling and the assistant, the dentist to wear a shield because their eyes, and you're talking about young children, you're talking about, you know, people that don't need to be exposed needlessly. And I think that's not such a reach. I don't think that's such a, to provide them. I don't that. think so either. The if only answer I can give tonight is we haven't finalized the decision on that. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I'm just, I think it's important. I, you know, I, at another level, to me, it feels like, uh, the children are, are being used as the canaries in the coal mine. They used to be the canaries went in to make sure. Now it's going to let the children go in to make sure. Well, something we're still working on, Harry. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, did I ask for uh, most, uh, all in favor? Yeah, I requested. I think it was uh, Cameron and then it was seconded yeah. by. Stephen, I believe. Stephen, yes. Yeah. And, okay. and it was all the comment questions and comments, and that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I'm in Aye. favor of A through D, Dharma. Okay. A through D. Okay. Opposed? I'm opposed to the reopening plan as it now stands. That's letter E, Dharma. A motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Instruction and Program Committee. Mrs. Whitney. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the following uh, confidential classifications and placements are listed on the supplemented agenda attachment H. Need a second. Marissa, a second. Sorry. Marissa, a second. Questions or comments? <laughs> Can't really question or comment on anything confidential, obviously. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Beans Rose is not here. I'll do the Finance Committee report and I make a motion that we approve A through uh, Q, you know, and on this we have, uh, I talked earlier, 
we're reducing uh, an, an F, we're reducing $115,436 in appropriations from the state of New Jersey. Okay, that reduction in state aid, if you look at all the other ones, 25,000 for the lease purchase, 61, uh, 684, all the things, the equalization aid, those are things that we had to cut out. We also got ourselves a hundred and uh, a correction, um, 52,591 from CARES money. That's because, the digital divide. Digital divide. Because of the work that Vicki did, finding ways of turning around, using the lease purchase to do other things, we didn't have to affect any employees, which was one of the things we were talking about. And I mentioned it in my president's report last month. Thank goodness we didn't have to do anything that we still have special education costs in here. If you look at the special education costs, they are all budgeted for costs also. So I make a motion to approve this. I need a second. Even we'll second. All right, opening it up for questions or comments. My comment is that I feel that we should have reversed the vote to get the $69,000 new math curriculum we should have done a one bridge year of using a free online complete uh, curricular program, Khan Academy, which is all set up with the core curriculum content standards, totally free online for one year while we dealt with this pandemic. We don't have laptops for kindergarten through second grade, although we're hoping to get them. We don't we're not set up for virtual learning yet. I don't think that 69K should have gone to that at this point. Um, that's my comment on that. And as I also commented before in the work session, this should have been, these financial um, decisions should be discussed with the whole committee, not just a select few. Okay, any that's other good. comments? No. In response to you, Vera. Well, Harry, do you have does Harry have one? I, Harry's trying to say something. Harry, you're trying to say something? Yes, Phil. Yes. Okay, you're go ahead. Yes. Okay. What no, are you trying to say? I'm trying to say something. The question on the table looks like trying to say something. Yes. The, uh, I agree with Vera that if, unless we have to, you know, we're totally committed to buying that, I think it's right now, it's not the priority because uh, certainly this district has had problems with math, that's for sure. We've tried other math programs, but at the same time, it, because of the uncertainty of what it means, I just think it's, uh, it's uh, am I still talking or did I get switched off here? No, I can and, hear you. I can hear you. Okay, and then I also um, asked that, uh, that I think there should be $900 that the school board, since it's the association we belong to, and that the information is vital, may not be vital to some board members, and it may be vital to others, or who knows, it's 25 people, not just board members who could have access to the materials that can be helpful people for a, for a year and it's just short-sighted if it's being knocked out as transportation because we know that if we spend for something in October it can help us much later in the year that the budget isn't all spent down at once. I'm not, if I'm not uh, my recollection bill isn't that how we suddenly had money to build uh, that uh, the bus depot there without any long-term planning so that oh yeah let's do this now so i think that's what i would like to see as a board member and i, I was told it was going to come out of our own pockets you know that's uh, that's the association that we belong to that's providing education that's providing how we should be running meetings providing how we should be running what's going on so Okay, I did hear a little bit about the bus depot. That was out of capital improvement money. Capital improvement money is different than what we're using. As for curriculum and for buying the math program, that had been discussed before and that had been voted on. And Vera, you know, you're sitting there talking about 
you know, some of the things that have been voted on and discussed before. And the budget is something that is not a five minute job. And it's not something that can't be, you know. The problem has to be input. And it seems like that the, the last thing you want is for the rest of the board to be educated by the school board association. It's ridiculous. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. You're, you mentioned something about school boards, but I know they did cancel the meeting and we canceled all trans. We took the money out for us going to Atlantic City, but that had been canceled. And then, right, you can put the money back in $900, not $5,000. No Nine. paper hotel rooms. People go down there, they're on their tea and they're drinking, they're eating on a taxpayer's money. This is $900 and get the education that's needed. Does I'm sorry, Harry. Does anyone? It's going to be a virtual meeting, just like this is virtual. Go ahead, Vicky. He's talking about the uh, the the conference you go to in October. Yes. Because they made it virtual, they really reduced the fee to go to it. Okay. So it's nine hundred dollars, and twenty five people can go to it. Okay. So it's a lot. They reduced it a lot. And the information's good for one year, one year. Is, is that, you know, right and the, information, the information stays on there for a year to be, for people to access. It's making the accommodation for a virtual world by the mm -hmm. school boards association who we are part of, who we pay. And they're reducing it to $900 for 25 people. And that information is there for a year for us all to use the many new board members, you know, after the election as well. So they should have information. So he's saying that you get a lot of good information from the conference that you can use for the whole year. Okay, I agree with that. That is very good. Is that something that is there nine hundred dollars in the budget that we could even afford something like that? that we can have a budget and finance committee meeting. And okay. Well, then why don't we have a budget and finance committee within the next month and we can discuss that. Would that work with you, Harry? Earth to Harry. It's, uh, I think it's, it needs to be done. It's how it gets done is you know, not important. It can be done. That's the thing. These things aren't set in stone, as we know. It's all sand capsules right now. Okay, well then we have a budget and finance committee and then we can discuss, you know, hopefully come next meeting we might be in the school again where we could all hear each other. That would be much better. Um, is there any other comments on this? You know, Phil, I just want to commend Vicki on what she's been doing. Uh, she's a new business administrator, not even uh, one year yet as a business administrator. She has seen the most challenging budget we've ever faced. She's seen the COVID-19 issues, just like we all have. Uh, you know, so we, we've really been dealing with two separate issues that, that have challenged us, and the budget is one of them. So I just wanted to shout out to Vicki and the Budget and Finance Committee for all the efforts to, to determine how the money is going to be spent, knowing that we're trimming it down. I say we're trimming it down to the bone. We're trimming it down to the marrow now. And so that's why I, I think that there... There could be some misunderstanding as to how CARES Act funding gets moved around and we defray the cost of other things. But whatever it is, um, you know, I, I really appreciate what Vicki is doing. And, and I'm sure that, you know, she has been uh, overwhelmed or I don't want to speak for Vicki, but the point is that it has been an overwhelming set of steps that we've needed to take to ensure that the budget is balanced. It has not been easy in any way, shape, or form. And then we had a bigger cut from our state. Then we're told this other funding is coming at some point. You know, so it it, it has been a very difficult process. So Vicky, thank you. All right, I definitely hope some other funding comes, and I definitely agree with Joe on that. Um, any other comments? Okay, on that, all in favor? Aye. Uh, <clears throat> opposed. All right, motion carries. Thank you all. Operation and Facilities Committee report. Mr. Calaguire. All right. It, it feels like Groundhog Day. We did this <laughs> earlier. I'm sorry, I was on mute. I'm sorry. Vicki, are you ready? 
I was waiting for you. <laughs> you know what? I put it on mute because my dog started barking <laughs> and I forgot to unmute. Okay, I'm ready. I did it the um, better way. A okay. through D, no. Wait, say that again. A through D, no. Say okay when you're ready for the next thing. A through D, no, okay. Mm -hmm. E, F, yes. Okay. G through J, no. Okay. K through N, yes. N is a Nancy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. O through P, no. Okay. Q, yes. Okay. Thank, okay, thank you. you. All right. Going back to you, Vince. All right. Uh, facility. Vince, you muted yourself. Oh, man. Somehow. <laughs> Thank you, Cam. <laughs> um, uh, routine maintenance activities for the month of July, schools closed due to coronavirus, uh, yard care mowing, weed whacking. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the soda guys doing all that. Summer cleaning is continuing, special project activities. Third leak on Pearson roof. Cleaned up debris after storm. Cleaning staff has disinfected both buildings on a daily basis. Have equity maintenance, uh, rooftop units, unit vents, and rooftop fans. And that's all I have. All right, thank you. You make the um, you make the motion, sir. I will make the motion. All right, I need a second. First of all, second. Okay, questions or comments? My comment, Vera Darmo, is as I said before, I just want to make sure that on the committee report or uh, the facilities report next time is something regarding the water systems that we already talked about to make sure that um, everything is safe because they've been shut down for so long or they've not been operating normally for so long. Okay, that's Vera, my comment. I'll talk to you offline about it, but okay. whether it's it's shut, that doesn't affect it in that way, but I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Like I said, but it's okay. also not shut down. We have staff members in the building every day using the water and running it on purpose just for that reason. But, you know, I, you know, I'm in the building right now. I've, I've used the water a number of times, so the water has okay. not. As a, as a layman, you know, trying to do my best looking at the CDC guidelines for reopening schools. I just felt it was my responsibility to share my concern. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> opposed? Um, Dharma opposed until I get that extra information. All right, motion carries. Policy and uh, committee report, Mr. Litwack, I notice you have no report so we'll move on to personnel committee report mr jenkins i will make a motion to approve the following a the substitute list for 2020 through 2021 b the appointment of angela caracella as the anti-bullying specialist for walnut street middle school for the 2020 2021 school year c the appointment of allison donnelly as the anti-bullying specialist for m joan pearson elementary school for the 2020 2021 school year Appointment of Joseph Mersinger as the anti-bullying bullying coordinator for the district for the 2020-2021 school year. And e, intermittent FMLA and NJFLA leave for Robert Hozier commencing approximately on 7-27-20 with the eligibility period to utilize leave ending after one year. And I will make that motion. And I need a second, please. Stephen will second. Thank you, Stephen. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. I'm sorry, There's second. A roll call vote. Although, I'm sorry, I apologize. Roll call vote, Vicki. Just cut me out tonight. <laughs> 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 Mr. Calgar. Uh, just, just one moment, please. I'm just reading one thing. I approve. Caliguar. Uh, Ms. Dharma. Aye. Ms. Gun She's not here. Uh, Mr. Cameron Jenkins made the motion. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karen Nugian. Yes. Mr. Litwack. 
Thumbs up or thumbs down, Harry? Make sure it's your thumb this time. <laughs> He's trying to do something. He can't hear. He's talking, but his audio is off. I don't know what. Uh, what are we closing off? I, it was all about the Personnel. Was it, was it report? Personnel. Was it the report? Yes, I read the report. Yeah, it was For what committee was that? Personnel committee report. Okay, I'm gonna have to abstain. I couldn't hear anything. Okay, abstain from there. No. Mr. Lure? Yes. Ms. Whitney? Yes. All right, motion carries. All right, board liaison reports. Um, Riverside, Mrs. Gonteski is on vacation, so she won't be able to give us anything. I'm sure she, you know, will at the next meeting. Um, New Jersey School Board and Bronx County School Boards Association. Um, Mr. Litwack, it's extremely difficult to hear you or understand what you're saying. If you'd like to give some sort of report, that's okay. If not, that's fine also. I would. I would, and I'll just pick up my lights. Today, that suit that was brought by uh, the Republicans against stopping Governor Murphy from being able to get the $9.9 billion was, was defeated. So that money will be there. Uh, let me just hit my lights up here. Uh, And when we live stream, when the teachers, again, we're not doing that, are we? We're not live streaming. We're not having the teacher in the classroom and then the students also at home at the same time getting information, correct? So live streaming is not currently part of the plan when it comes to, I think okay. we're doing okay. that, that, that teacher in the classroom, there's a video. It wouldn't apply to that. It wouldn't apply to that. There will be real-time instruction, but it's not live streaming in the sense that I think you're referring to. Yeah, and then there was one thing to say about policy, about the possibility of amendments to having a checklist. In other words, maybe uh, anything that we have to do is just have like a checklist with amendments. Uh, the medical community arguments for kids in the building and notice the circulation of like her each room about they're finding stuff now with ventilation. Um, and then let's see. There was a meeting. on the 10th of so two days ago. And they were saying about in a river that's a six feet within, uh, within 10 minutes of being exposed of what is someone that said is, uh, you know, it has to be contaminated or considered that. Um, and self quarantining, how is that? And I know we're having troubles with tracing, but it's a county health issue. It was, I think, in today's paper, and then of what happened with asymptomatic people, et cetera. And the nurses, you know, the nurses, the big shields, and it, when we have kids in school, What's it mean if a kid has a runny nose or a cough? And that things like band and choir where people have to expel and sing that poses a threat. Uh, it will be fully virtual, Harry. So for the sake of everybody on the board and the public, uh, instrumental music, uh, chorus, it, it will be virtual because uh, we can't run the risk of having uh, the, the particles, as yeah, yeah. Armo was talking about 
You know, yep. how when, when everyone's job. talking, breathing, singing, uh, blowing through a trumpet, you name it. Yeah. And transportation, they were saying 11 people on a bus, but that's not really fiscally doable. And I don't know if I, it seems like some people can hear me better now, but the, um, the idea that what are we doing for kids that are at a bus stop, you know, and what are we doing back and forth from school? And once again, for recreation, it's a mix. We're doing our best as a school to keep them group and keep them kind of homogeneous, but once again, we have the community. And all we can do is the best we can with a mask, you know, everyone having masks, open windows, um, avoiding close contact. Um, and, you know, the teacher unions, I think they're going to be throwing the last shoe into the machinery with the people, the union saying we're not going back in and the risk to teachers. And the, um, there's a COVID dashboard. People familiar with that? A COVID dashboard. Okay. And special ed students, what about extra PPEs and face shields? And they often are most susceptible to health issues. So, and I think Harry's frozen. Uh, no, he's still moving. That's it. I, I, I think he just said that's it. That's it, Harry? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I'm sorry, it's just very, extremely yeah. difficult to hear what you're saying there, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you, Vera, for the messages in the chat. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, I don't have anything from Township Committee because obviously they haven't had a meeting either, you know. So on that, uh, old business. Uh, board self-evaluation, you know, there's a link there on your thing for WW School Board. You know, <clears throat> everybody can go to that, but that's going to be still be, Joe's going to talk about that superintendent's evaluation when we go to executive. Uh, new business, you know, there is three seats up for school board and we have five candidates that have put in for it. Um, one returning candidate, Rose Gonteski, and obviously, you know, four new people, you know, good luck to everyone. Uh, I believe distributions are all out. Really, we don't have anything. And I would like to now open this for public comment on non-agenda items. Who are the four other people? Okay, there's Eric. Hi, Eric. How are you, sir? If I was any better, I'd be you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Listen, my wife and I want to uh, thank the administration, the board, the teachers, the staff members who all made the eighth grade event last week a big success. Uh, the kids all had a great time. We truly appreciate your willingness to help facilitate this, and it, it was just a great time. So thank you to everybody that was involved in that. Um, and then I also had a question and comment. I know it's on an agenda item, but uh, forgive me as I was tuning in on my way home from work before. Um, that's $69,000 on the uh, math system. Is that an annual recurring cost or is it just higher in the first year of implementation for setup fees? Uh, Vicki, you can answer that. I think that was our first year in implementation for it, wasn't it? It's the first year of implementation and I don't know, you'd have to uh, check with Casey if there's, if there's anything that you have to purchase worksheet wise or anything going forward right and it had that had been discussed the going to a new math program back about a year or so ago and we were because of the old math system or old math program we had we had talked about updating it and it had been discussed in our budget meetings quite a few times just about everything had been discussed in our budget meetings so you know it's it's one of the things that we do have to do it's not something that we could just say forget about it and do it later yeah, so uh, I see you. that Mrs. Noble yeah. provided the info. Uh, it is a, a five-year license, and um, as 
she's there. We were up for a renewal on our old program. We have we have mentioned this, Mr. Massa, throughout the meeting. I don't know what time you arrived, but no matter what, uh, I appreciate your comments about the eighth grade. Uh, you know, it's it's actually very bittersweet, as we all know. I mean, there was a great group of students, and to see them have a last final fun event. Uh, with their classmates was great. And I was glad to be part of it. I appreciate the parents for everything that they've done because the parents really did, did take the bull by the horns with this situation. We did have a great DJ there. I, I don't I don't know if you know him, Mr. Massa, but he's a great <laughs> DJ. Just a little. <laughs> Just a little. But uh, all, all that being said about, uh, and uh, Casey, thank you for posting that in there. That being said, that's a five-year licensing. That's really not all that expensive being a, a tech director at, at Pensacola now and looking over the, the budgets that I have. Um, but I mean, we really should be taking into consideration public-wise, Board of Education member-wise, that COVID's really changing the face of education to a more ed-centered model. And this could be a program or a platform that meets students on their digital wavelength, which researchers like Ian Jukes right, maximize educational opportunities for all children. So both the board, those administrative team, they should be pushing our entire staff to innovate instructional practices. And if this program and platform helps with that goal, especially if it has like ELL type, uh, you know, supports in there, we should absolutely support this expense instead of questioning it. When it was stated in that uh, work session I was listening to, it was fully vetted by the teaching staff in that. So I um, just kind of wanted to make that comment and thank you for your time. All right. Thank you very much, Jarek. You know, any other uh, questions from the public? Harry wanted to talk, it looks like. Okay, Harry, are you trying to say something again? Yeah, yeah. Um, you had mentioned that Rose was running, but who were the other four candidates? Um, it is Rose. It is, um, I don't have that. In oh, the five members? Yeah. Well, I, I remember who it is. Okay. Uh, Rose Gonteski is running for re-election. Uh, Harry, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, Rose yeah. Gonteski yeah. is running for re-election. Uh, Robert Dovey is running for election. Uh, okay. Eric Mossop is running for election. Uh, I believe... Uh, Steve McLaughlin is running for re-election, and then another McLaughlin whose name I cannot remember. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, so, Mr. President, for the benefit of the board and the public, I see a wonderful comment from Greta Gareth, who I appreciate greatly for a meeting that we had yesterday with the Delanco Mutual Aid Group, a group that is uh, focused not only on the Black Lives Matter movement, but also on equity, diversity, inclusivity, social justice, and all sorts of things that I believe, and I, I think we all believe, are beneficial for our, our community and, and our district. So I appreciate working with them, uh, and, and it's something that I'm going to be bringing to the board very soon when it comes to having the Delanco Mutual Aid Group meet with a board committee to discuss uh, different topics that, that they're passionate about. So true. So thank you, Greta Gareth. All right. Thank you. And anyone else uh, wish to comment? Looking here to see if anyone else has their hands up. Okay, being no one else has their hands up, I'd like to close uh, it. You know what? You know what? I'm going to say it. Um, so let's close <clears> it. I'd rather say it now than later. Let me uh, close the public first, okay? Hold on. So okay. I'm going to close this uh, public comment, you know, on non-agenda items. Steve, go ahead now. No, I just wanted to say since we brought up the um, – Board of Education, I just want to say that I'm very proud um, that we had five members of the community file to run for Board of Education. Um, it's long overdue that the Board of Education um, have a, 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 you know, we've had a couple contested races here and there, um, but I hope that this remains the norm. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it's good. It, the more people we have running for Board of Education, um, and it means that the more people are informed, um, I can tell you that it is definitely um, a life lesson. I got on this board and a lot of things that I thought were proved not to be. Um, and uh, I just think that, um, you know, it's great that we finally have uh, a lot of people taking interest and notice of the Board of Education. Um, and I just wanna note that, you know, the, the Board of Education, just on a side note is 
the majority of your tax bill. Um, so I don't know why these races are constantly, you know, you see unopposed, unopposed, unopposed. Um, I, I, that I just don't understand. So uh, I congratulate the five members who stepped up to the plate um, to run. Um, and I wish them all the best of luck. Um, and thank you. Thank you too, Stephen. And the learning- Thank you, Stephen. The learning curve for school board is something that's not going to be learned in a year or two. It takes a couple of years to learn. And there's quite a few things, you know, with finances, with budgets and everything that has to be learned over a period of time. And you think you're going to come in and change the world. And when you get here, you discover there's so many restrictions from the state of New Jersey, from federal and everything else. And, you know, what we're trying to do is the absolute best for our students, you know, and that, that's, that's basically what we're doing. All right. Now, we do have to go into executive session. This is approximately 8 o'clock, and uh, I believe we're going to go into executive session to discuss confidential personnel matters. I believe it'll take probably, let's say, an hour, so it'll be 9 o'clock, and I need a motion and a second for executive session. Motion, Marissa, to go into executive. Second. Second, Caliguire. Right. Uh, you've got two fingers up. Harry. That means a second. Oh, that's a second. Uh, Duh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, second, all in third and a fourth. Aye. 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 All right. We'll go to executive session. All right. Mr. Jenkins, before we go, I just want to let the public know that when we come back at nine, uh, we don't anticipate approving any other items except for the closing of the meeting. Uh, I, I have no other items to recommend. I don't, I don't anticipate board members suddenly adding items to the agenda. But we would come back at nine eight at nine p.m. to close the public meeting. Ready. Okay. All right. See you in the other Zoom chat. All right. So we'll see you then.